In Siyat HaDishmai, we're going to learn Shabbos Tafkuf Lamad Vov. We're going to start five lines from the bottom of Tafkuf Lamad Hay Omad Base. Says the Gemara Tanya, we learned in a Brisa. Reb Shimon ben Gamliel Oimir. Kol Sheshoho Lamad Yoim Ba'odom Einoi Nefil. A Nefil is a child that was born that was going to die. It was a child that could not survive, and we'll soon see that for all intents and purposes, he was never called alive. It's how long do you know, how long does a person have to survive for you to know this is definitely a live human being? 30 days. Shanema, as it says in the Pasuk, Ufduyov mi ben choydesh tifte, kesef, etc. At what point can a person be redeemed? There's different halachas of erichin, which we're not discussing now, but a person has value only from when he's a month old. From 30 days. Before that, we could we assume, or at least in some cases, we assume that he's not going to survive. Shmoines Yomim Babahema Enoi Nefel. An animal. Also, at what point is he called an animal that's live? Only if he survived for eight days. So according to Shimon bin Gamliel, if you shechted an animal before eight days was over, there's a good chance that this animal was considered dead because the eight days weren't over. And if it's considered dead, you can shecht it for all you want. You're not allowed to eat it. And it's, it might be called an avela, it might be called a trefer. Some of those were, details we're going to discuss later in the Gemara. But either way, Rup Shimon Gamliel holds, until an animal hasn't survived eight days, you don't know that it's alive. Shanemer, as it says in the Pasuk, Umiyoim hashmini v'holo yerotze lekorban ishei Lashem. You're only allowed to bring a korban from an animal that's considered live, and you're not allowed to bring a korban until the eighth day. Once the eighth day has kicked in, even if you haven't waited the whole eighth day, it's considered live. What happens if you haven't waited the 30 days for a person or the eight days for an animal? This is the Gemara talking, not Rabshem ben Gamliel. The Gemara is asking, what, what are we assuming? If it's after 30 days and after 8 days, we know that the person or the animal is live. Within that period of time, what is it? A sophic. Maybe it's a nephil, maybe not. Maybe it will survive, maybe not. Ask the Gemara, Mimhel Hecha Mahalinon Lei. How can you ever do bris mila on any child in the world? A child, the bris mila has to be done on the 8th day. On the 8th day, every single child is a sophic nephil. And if it's a nephil, then there's no mitzvah to do bris mila. You only have to, mechuyiv, there's only a mitzvah and a requirement to do mila on a child that's live. If this child is dead, and we're soon going to see he's compared to a stone, then, then the child is, there's no mitzvah of mila. If there's no mitzvah of mila, then making a wound in this child is going to be also on Shabbos. How can you ever do bris mila on Shabbos? Omer of Adabar Ava. Rabbi Adabar Ava comes up with a very original explanation. Either way, you can do the bris mila. If he's considered live, shapir kamoil, then you're allowed to do the bris mila. It's no problem. You've done the mitzvah. If the child's not going to survive, and then for all intents and purposes, he was never considered alive, then he's considered dead. Then doing the bris mila is no different than chopping up a piece of meat. It sounds horrible to say that, but it's, it's like mechatech bebosor. And that's also not Chirul Shabbos. Only if he's considered live and you make a wound in a live being, not for the mitzvah of Mila, that's a problem on Shabbos. If he's considered dead, then you, there's no is of Chirul Shabbos to do the Mila. That was what Rav Adabra Ava explained. Says the Gemara. Ve'el Tanya. We've seen previously that Sophic ben Zayin, Sophic ben Ches. What happens if you have a doubt whether this child was born in the seventh month of pregnancy or the eighth month of pregnancy? And we know that if the child's born in the seventh month, it will survive. If it's born in the eighth month, it will not survive. If it's born in the eighth month, you're not allowed to do bris mila on it because the child is considered, is counted for dead. It's like a stone, as we saw in the Gemara previously. And you're not allowed to do the bris mila. If you have a sophic, as with all the sfakers, if you have a doubt, you're not allowed to do the bris mila on Shabbos. You're not allowed to be mechal Shabbos if you have a doubt. The ein mechal in olavos Shabbos asks the Gemara Amai, why not? 
נמהולי ממונפשך. אם חי הוא שפיר כמוהיל, ואם לאו מחתיך בבוסר הוא. According to the logic of Rabbi Adabar Ava, then even this child that was born, and you have a doubt, is it from the seventh month or the eighth month, you can do the bris milah. If it's the eighth month, then he's counted for dead, so it's like chopping up or cutting a dead being. It's not Chilul Shabbos. And if it's Ben Sheva, if it's going to survive, then you've done the mitzvah of bris milah. Omar Mar Braid Ravina. Mar Braid Ravina answered as follows. Ano v'reb nuchoi bar Zechariah targimna the two of us, me and Reb Nuchumi ben Zechariah, we translated it as follows. That means when it says that you're not mechalal Shabbos for the Sophic Zayin, Sophic Ches, mi mil hochanami malinon le. When it says there in the Brisa that you don't do the Mila, no. When the Brisa doesn't say actually you don't do the Mila, it says you mustn't be mechalal Shabbos. We assumed it means you don't do the Mila. No, you can do the Mila as Reb Adba Ava said. We'll remember that Rabbi Yezah says you're allowed to be Mechal Shabbos even to prepare for the Mila. Even if you have to light coals to prepare the tools that with which you're going to do the Mila, you're allowed to do that on Shabbos as well. So Rabbi Adabra Ava's logic goes as far as if you're cutting the Orlo skin, you're causing some blood to come out, that you're not allowed to make a wound. Rabbi Adabra Ava says that that cutting up Somebody that's live is the mitzvah of Mila. Cutting up someone who's dead is not Chilul Shabbos. But to make a fire in order to prepare the tools, you haven't got that logic. And therefore, according to the, uh, those who argue with the Rebbe Yeza, you're never allowed to be Mechal Shabbos if you're just doing the preparations. But according to Rebbe Yeza, you are allowed to do the preparations, even though there's Chilul Shabbos. But that's on condition that it's certainly Mila. If the child is a Sophic, Chai, Sophic, Mace, then you're not allowed to do those preparations because it's proper Chirul Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. And now we're going to discuss this concept of a Nephil, a child that's now alive but is not going to survive. And we just said now it's considered dead. Rabbi Ada Ba'ava said it's Machatech Babosaru. It's just like a piece of flesh. We're going to discuss that now. Omar Abaya Ketanoi. It seems to be a Machlokas Tanoim. It says in the Pasuk, Vichiyomus min habehemo ashehi lochem loochlo, hanegea benivloso yitma ad orev. There are certain halochas of animals when they die, they have the tumor of nevela. Which type of animals? Animals that, that were tohir, they could have been loochlo, they, they should have been food for people. So the Gemara learns from there, and we do, in Teres Kernim, there's Every word in this pasuk is discussed at length. We're not going to go through all of it now. What does the Gemara here say? That from these words, V'chiyomus min abahim ha'ashihi lochem lo'ochlo is coming to teach us. L'hovi ben shmoino she'ein shchitosoi metarosoi. If an animal is born in the eighth month of having been conceived from its mother, and the Gemara in Bukhiris discusses which animals their pregnancy is nine months, other animals it's only five months. We're talking about those animals whose pregnancy is nine months. And there also we assume that if the, the animal is born in the eighth month of pregnancy, it will not survive. So this we learn from this Pasuk that if an animal is born a Nephil, that means we assume it's not going to survive, then even though you do Shechita, nonetheless, it's going to have the tumor of a novella. And we know that any animal that, for example, an animal that's a trefer, that it's not really going to survive more than a year. That's what a trefer is. It's a perikin chulin. Then if you do shechita, even though you're not allowed to eat the trefer, but what the shechita helped is that the dead animal is now not considered a novella. It doesn't have the tumor of a novella. It's, it's a dead animal. You're not allowed to eat it because it's trefer, but it's not a novella. Over here, the aloch is that a, a, an animal that we know was born ben shmoina, we know it's not going to survive, and then even if you do the shechita, the shechita is invalid. It's as if you did shechita on a dead animal. That's why we bring it in here. So the Tanakama holds that doing shechita on, this, on an animal that's going to die is, is considered that you cut a dead piece of meat and therefore, when it dies, it will have the din of a novella. Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Yudah, 
They say no. It's not considered that you did a shechita on a dead animal. You did shechita on a live animal. It's going to die. And you're not allowed to eat it. We're soon going to see that. But the shechita is valid no less than it's valid on a trefa and it's metaharosoi, it will not be Tomei Tomas Novela. So you see here clearly, a machlekes tanoim, whether an animal that was born in the eighth month of pregnancy, whether it's considered dead or not. My love, Bahaka Miflugi, we assume that this is the point of the argument. The Marasov Archaihu, one holds its corns considered live, and therefore the shechita is valid enough that when it, that it's not going to be a novela. Or Marasov Amesu, and the, the Tanakama holds that it's considered dead, the shechita is no shechita, and when it dies, it will be an avela. So that was Abaya's interpretation of this machlekes. Omar Rava, Rava commented to Abaya and said, I hochi, if you're right, that these Tanoim are arguing whether an animal that was born in the eighth month of pregnancy is counted as dead or not, why are they arguing as to whether the shechita works in as much as that after the animal is now dead, if you shecht it, it's obviously dead, is it called a, like a trefer that was shechted and is not tomei, or is it called a novela? If that's what they're arguing about, it should be the same achleikus, are you allowed to eat this animal or not? That according to the mandoma that says it's considered dead, if you shecht it, then, then it's considered, you can't eat it, because the shechita is not a shechita, you're not allowed to eat it. And according to other Manda who considers it live, then you're allowed to eat it. Elo says Rava, the Kule Alma Meishu. Both those Tanoim agree that the animal is considered dead. It's not con- it's an animal that's going to die because it was born in the eighth month of pregnancy is considered dead. What's the Machlekes? What are they arguing about? If it's considered dead, how can one Tana hold that it's metarosoi mitumot, that the shechitosoi metarosoi, that doing shechita will, will avoid the Tumas Nevela being chal on it? How can shechita work if it's considered dead? The Beisi Berbiud, the Rebelozi Berb Shimon Sovri, they hold that the shechita works. Ketrefa is no different to any trefa. Every trefa we know is not going to survive. Nonetheless, the shechita helps that it doesn't become an avela, even though you're not allowed to eat it. And therefore, in the same way as it works to trefa, it works here. Trefa, lav afal gav de meisohi. Do we not know that trefa, even though it cannot survive, shechitosa metarosa, if you shecht it, then the animal is not considered an avela, even though you cannot eat it. Hochanami so too, leishna, is no different to here. Even though the animal is not going to survive, Nonetheless, the shechita helps that it doesn't become an avela. The Rabbonon, the Tanakama, who say that even when you shech this animal, the shechita is not considered a shechita, and once it's dead, it's considered an avela. Why are they differentiating between every novella, every trefa, and here? The Chachomim agree that trefa, if you shech the trefa, it's not an avela. Why, if you shech an animal that was born in the eighth month, is it, it, is it considered an avela? Rabbonon loy domila trefa. They say that this animal is not the same as a trefa. Trefa hoisa lo shasa Every trefa, when it was born, it was a normal, live, well, and healthy animal. And now, when you do the shechita, even though technically we know the animal is not going to live out the year, it's going to die. But since it was alive, it was healthy, it could have and should have survived. It's going to die. But if you do shechita on time before it dies, it's not going to have the status of an avela. Hi, but over here, there was no point in the life of this animal that was born in the eighth month that he was actually considered live. And therefore the shechita is totally invalid and it's, it's, it's going to be a novella. What happens with a, an animal that's born a trefa? Over there, it never had a time in its life that it could survive. And even there the Chachomim say that if you do Shechita on that Trefa, it's not a Nevela. Why is it different to here? They were both born without the potential to live. Says the Gemara, no. Hosom yesh b'mino Shechita. This animal, even though it was born a Trefa, but another animal that would have been born at the time it was born, not the time as in when the pregnancy, but another animal of this kind that was born would have survived. This particular animal didn't survive. 
right? If another animal would have been born when this animal was born, we're talking about a regular trefer. It was born full term and after nine months, it could survive. This particular animal didn't, was sick. So therefore, shechita is valid on it. But in the case of an animal being born in the eighth month, there, there's no chance in the world of any animal in the world, in this group of animals, that could survive if it's born in the eighth month. Therefore, it's never considered live. The shechita is totally invalid. And therefore, it's considered a novella according to the Rabbonon. Hacha ein bemina shechita. There's never an animal born in the eighth month that is able to be shechted. Unlike a trefa where other animals of its kind born at that time could have shechita because they could be well and healthy. Continues the Gemara. Iboyelohu. They asked a question. Mi pligi rabbonon our leader Reb Shimon ben Gamliel oiloi. We saw at the bottom of Tafkuf Lamet Hayamut Beis, Reb Shimon ben Gamliel said that an animal within the first eight days, we, we consider it at least a sophic nephil. We're not sure if it's going to survive. And therefore we have to, all the halachas of the animal is as if it's not going to survive until it gets to the eighth day. The question is, is does everybody agree with the Pshim ben Gamliel? Or do the Chachomim argue with the Pshim ben Gamliel and say even within the eighth days, we consider it as live? Oiloi? In the event that there is a Chachomim that argued the Pshim ben Gamliel, What's the halachic ruling? What's the status of an animal in the first seven days of its life? Toshima, we're going to try and bring proof. Egel shenoilad beyomtiv, a calf that was born on yomtiv, sheichatin oisay beyomtiv. It's not considered mukta because Rashi explains why, even though when Yontov came in, this calf had not yet been born, it's not considered muktzah because there's a special halacha that when you shecht a mother, then the child inside its womb is considered, it's considered as if you did the shechita there as well, and you can eat it without needing another shechita. So that's why it's not muktzah, because that child is, was really edible, even though it was not born yet, you could have shechted the mother. So what do we see from here? Mukta is a side issue. You see that the day it was born, you're allowed to shecht it. It's not yet reached the eighth day. How can you shecht it? According to Shem ben Gamliel, if you shecht an animal within the eighth day, within the eight days, you're not allowed to eat it, Bichlal, because you don't know if it's considered live. Says the Gemara, We're talking about a circumstance where you have absolute certainty that this animal is full term, is not in the eighth month of pregnancy. Toshma, we're going to try and bring another proof. Vishovin, there's a machlekas, Rabbi Hud and Rabbi Shimon, whether one, an animal, which was a bachir, a firstborn animal, which is really a korban, it has to go on the Mizbeach, it's hektish, but if at some point a, it receives a mum, a permanent mum, at that point it loses its kedusha, and you're allowed to shecht it and eat it. There's lots of halachas. We'll see that as we travel through Shas, the halachas of Bukhair. But that's a machloikas. There's a machloikas on Yontav. Are, is, are the professionals, the experts, who are able to determine whether the blemish this animal has is a permanent one or not, are they allowed to determine this on Yom Tov or not. So it says the Shavin, both Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Shimon both agree, the Sheim Noilad Hu Umumoy Imoy, if, if the animal was born healthy and at some point it got a mum, a blemish, and everybody knows, oops, now it's no longer able to be used as a carbon, but we need to go to the experts. We go to the experts. Here we have an issue. Is one allowed to go to the expert on Yom Tov or not, since it was it was okay and then it became not okay, it's similar to making a judgment. You don't do judgment on Yom Tov. Even if you're going to say that it is a blemish, then you're actually fixing the animal, you're preparing the animal, you're making the animal fit to be shechted by anyone who's going to eat it. And that's also an issue on Shabbos and Yom Tov. So either way, there's a machlek of Yudah and Reb Shimon if that's allowed. But if the animal is born with the mum, as it's born, you can see that there's some blemish on it, and it's never been determined that it had a mum, it's never been determined it didn't have a mum, and if the based in the experts are there at the time of the birth of the animal, they both agree 
that Shazem in Amuchon, that it's considered as if it's, so to speak, already been prepared to be able to be shechted and eaten, and therefore there's no issue whatsoever with them being determining the status of this blemish, even though it's Yontav. But what do we see from there? Leaving the alochas of Bechaira aside, we see that, that the animal, the day it was born, it was born on Yontav, and the day it was born, the Chachomim are going to determine if it's a blemish, if it's a permanent blemish, they're going to shecht it and eat it. It's not yet eight days old. So you don't know if it's called live at all. How can you eat it? Says the Gemara, We're talking about a case where there's absolute certainty that this animal is not, was not born in the eighth month, and an animal that's not born in the eighth month, it does, we do not need to wait for the end of the seven days for the eighth day in order to determine that it's alive. It's clear here in the Gemara, we just learned something which I should have stressed at the beginning of the sugya, that Rab Shimon bin Gamliel that says that you have to wait the full 30 days for, uh, for a human, for, the, for a child, or to wait until an animal enters its eighth day, that's just in order to determine that the child was carried full term and that it's not a ben shmoina, it's not been it was not born in the eighth month. But the reason a child should be nephil is only because it's underdeveloped. It's only because it's, it did not come to full term. Or that's already in the Gemara. The Gemara says that Ben Sheva in the seventh month, the child can survive. In the ninth month, it can survive. In the eighth month, not. And we just don't know exactly how long it was from the time of conception until the time of the birth. And therefore, Shem ben Gamliel needs the time period of 30 days for a human and eight days for an animal to determine that the child was, was full term. But in an event that we know on an absolute level that the animal or the child was full term, in that case, even Shem ben Gamliel agrees that on the very first day it's considered live. Let's get back to our Gemara Toshima. We're going to have an explicit brisa that says that the Archachomim that argue with Abshimon ben Gamliel, Toshima, the Omer of Yehuda, Omer Shmuel, Halocha ker Abshimon ben Gamliel, the Halocha is like Abshimon ben Gamliel, Halocha mechnal de pligi shma mino. From the fact that you have to say the Halocha is like Abshimon ben Gamliel, is clear that there were people who argued with him, the Chachomim argued with him. Nonetheless, the Halocha is like Abshimon ben Gamliel, that when one doesn't know in an absolute way whether the child is a Nephil or not, you have to wait. 30 days for a child, 7 days, 8 days for an animal, and then it's considered live for all the halachas. Continues the Gemara. Omar Abaya, Nofal min hagag. If, an, if a child, chas v'shalom, fell off a roof, or ochle ari, or if a lion ate it, divri hakoil chayhu. The discussion here is that what happens if we don't know if the child's a nephil? And, and there was an outside, an external reason that caused the child to die. Obviously, if the child is a Nephil, then we assume it will die in the first 30 days. But if the child didn't die, but it got killed or it fell off a roof, then, then what, well, how do we look at the child until it died? Do we say it was probably alive or do we say it was probably dead? So Abayah says, Nofal minagag oy ochleri, Everybody agrees it's considered live. Kipligi. What, when is there an argument between Rup Shem ben Gamliel and the Chachomim? Shepiheik umes. If you see that the child displayed a, just a very weak form of life, it just yawned a little bit and then it died straight away. In that case, there where you have reason to believe that there's something not right with the child. Marasova, the Tanakama, the Chachomim hold Chaihu. Nonetheless, it, we do not consider it a Nephil. Or Marasova, Mesu. And Yubshim ben Gamliel says that since it didn't survive the 30 days, it's considered dead. Lemay Nafkumine. The Gemara asks, what's the difference? This child was born, it yawned, you saw just a little bit of life in it, and then it died then what's the difference if it was called live for those few moments or not? Says the Gemara, lifter minayibum. We know there's a halacha. If somebody dies without children, his wife has to marry one of the brothers 
of the deceased husband. That's the mitzvah of Yibum. And if either the brother or this woman, this widow, doesn't want to get married, then you have to do chalitza. Only then she can get married to somebody else. However, if they had a child, then there's no mitzvah of Yibum. So over here, the question is whether this child was called live in order that if afterwards the father of this child then died, do we say they had children or do they not have children? If this child was never considered live, then it's as if he died without children and his wife has to do Yibum. If it was called live, then it's as if he had a child and then the wife doesn't do Yibum. So that's the difference in the chi- whether the child is called live or the child is not called live. Says the Gemara, you Abaya said that if this child fell from a roof or was killed otherwise, then we assume that it was considered live, even though it didn't survive till the end of the 30 day period, in which case we have clear evidence of that. But since there's no way of having that evidence because an external cause caused it to die, but we can assume that it was considered live. This seems to be contradicted by the following story. Rav Papa and Rav Huna, they were visiting the home of the son of Rav Idibar Ovin. And they prepared for them Igla Tilsa, a third, a, a calf that was a third born calf, in the seventh day of when it was born. On its seventh day, they shechted the animal and, and they offered it to Rav Papa and Rav Huna to eat. V'omrile, Rav Papa and Rav Huna said to them, I isrechisulei ad l'urta, had you waited till the evening where it would have entered its eighth day, and then we would have been sure this animal is called live, and then you would have shechted it. Have we would have eaten from it. Hashta, now that you shechted it, before you could determine whether it was whether it was going to survive or not, we cannot eat from it. It's a suffix. Maybe it was a nephil. And over there, it was killed, not natural cause and effect. It was killed because it was shechted. That would be similar to a, li- to, to a lion killing it. And we see from here, they did not assume that it was live, not like Abaya said. Elo, we have to change it as follows. Kusha divri hakol meisu. What did Abaya say? Abaya said that if it was Nofal Minagag, then everybody agrees it's Chai. When it was Pieik, Umeis, then it's Machloikus of Shimon Gamliel and the Chachomim. Now we're changing that. We're saying if it was Pieik, Umeis, everybody considers it as dead. Ki Pligi, where's the Machloikus? But Nofal Minagag, Vachleari. In the case where there was an outside reason that caused this child to die, and now you could not determine whether it was going to naturally survive or not survive. That's a machlekes marasova meisur. Shem ben Gamliel says we consider it dead. Umarasova archaihu. And these two chachomim, Rav Papa and Rav Huna Breid Rav Shua, did not want to eat it because the halacha is like Shem ben Gamliel, as we saw before. And therefore they didn't want to eat from the animal that was shechted before the seven days were over. Continues the Gemara. Bereder of Dimi Bar Yosef is Yalid Lehahu Yenuka. The son of Rav Dimi Bar Yosef, his wife gave birth to a child. Begoy Tlosin Yoimin Shochiv. Unfortunately, this child died within 30 days. Yosef Komis Abel Lilave. He did all the halachas of Avelus. He sat Shiva. Omar Lehavua, his father, who was Rav Dimi Bar Yosef, said to his son, why are you sitting shiva? Do you just want people to give you those special foods that are prepared for people who are mourning? Is that all you want? There's no heel for you to sit in mourning because this child didn't survive. He was never called alive. And therefore there's no halachas of mourning. Omar Lee, so Rav Dimi Bar Yosef said to his father, I have absolute certainty from however he knew he had certainty that this child was definitely full term and was definitely not a Nephil. And as we saw before, even Rabshem ben Gamliel agrees. If you know with absolute certainty that this child was born full term, then the child is considered live, even according to Rabshem ben Gamliel. 
Rav Ashi Ikle Bey Rav Kahana. Rav Ashi was visiting the home of Rav Kahana. Isra Bey Milsa Begoit Los in Yoimin, and unfortunately he too lost his child within 30 days from when the child was born. Chazia de Yosef Komis Abelilavei. Then Rav Ashi saw that Rav Kahana was sitting in mourning. Omar Leilo Isover Le Mar Lahoda Omar of Yehuda Mashmuel Alochel Kabshim Ben Gamliel. Rav Ashi asked Rav Kahana, "Do you not agree with what we said before that Alochel like Kabshim Ben Gamliel that a child that dies within thirty days is considered dead, and therefore there's no Alochel of mourning?" Omar Le Kimli Begavei Shekolu Le Chadosha. I have absolute certainty that this child was born full term and therefore was going to was should have survived, and therefore there is there is the Alochel of mourning. Continues the Gemara Itmar. If a child was born and it died within 30 days, the mother thought, this is a child, we had a child, my husband, the husband passed away, and the child and the mother went and got married to somebody else, Viniskacha. She did a kiddushin. We know that the marriage, at least from, from Torah's point of view, has two stages. It first has kiddushin. And then it has Nisuin, and when we learn other Masechtas and Shas, we get to say the Noshim, we'll discuss it more at length. This woman, she did the Kiddushin. She thought, there's no problem. She didn't realize that it could be that this child was not considered alive. It's considered as if she never had a child, and she has to do Yibum. Her husband passed away without children. She has to marry the husband's brother, or do Chalitza. Omar Ravina Mishmeda Rava. So Ravina said in the name of Rava, it depends. Im Aishas Yisroel he if the person that she did Kiddushin to was a Yisroel, not a Koyan, then Khiletis. She can do Khalitza. She cannot do Yibum because she cannot marry him because she's already Mukudeshes to somebody else. But she can go through the Khalitza process that will detach her any type of of relationship halachic relationship to the brother of a husband, and then she can do Nisuin and get married to this Yisrael. Im Eishas Koyenhi, but if she did Kiddushin to a Koyen, and if she then does Chalitza, she cannot do Nisuin, she cannot continue with the marriage process because a Koyen is not allowed to marry somebody who's done Chalitza. Im Eishas Koyenhi, Eino Choyelet says, we're allowed to rely on the Chachomim that that treat this child, even though it died within 30 days, treat it as being live. And if it's live, there's no chivu yibum. And therefore, if, if, if the, what's at risk is her having to get divorced from her husband, from her second husband, we do not want her to go through that. And we consider the child as live and she doesn't need to do chalitza. Rav Shravya Mishmeda Rava Omar. Rav Shravya said in the name of Rava, not like Ravina said in the name of Rava, that the halachas like Shem ben Gamliel, this child died within 30 days, it was considered as if it was never alive, you have to do chalitza. And if your second husband that you did kiddush into is a koyen, and now he cannot marry you because you're chalitza, tov, what can we do? Omale Rav Rav Shravya. Rav said to Rav Shravya, Be'ur Omar Rav Hochi. You're right. What you said in the name of Rava, Rava said that in the evening. Let's have for a hodar bay. But in the ev- in the morning, he changed his mind and he said what I said in his name that if it's she's mukudeshes to a koyin, then she does not need to do chalitza. Omar le, shirisua. So so Rav Shravya answered back to Ravina and said, "Are you suggesting that she's allowed to get married?" without doing chalitza, and that it's as if this child is, is considered live against what Rav Shimon ben Gamliel says, even though the Allah is like Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. Yehei Rav the Tishru Tarba. If that's how you're ruling, I hope that whoever ruled that way is also going to rule and tell people that even Chalev, which are certain fats which are seriously asked to eat, I hope that Hashem should help, Emir Hashem, they will rule that one's allowed to eat fats, and that way everybody will know that this person does not know how to rule halachas, and then they will not follow the halacha that this woman doesn't need to do chalitza. Because the halacha is like Hashem ben Gamliel, the child is considered dead from when it was born, and the woman has to do chalitza even if she's married to a kohen.
Continues the Gemara. Rabbi Yehuda Matir V'chulu. There was a Machlekes we saw earlier on in the case of an Adreganus. We saw that Rabbi Yehuda holds that in the Mishnah on the Fkufla Medalad Omad Beis, that the Tanakhamas say that Adreganus ain't mechal lin alavis ha-Shabbos. You're not allowed to do the Mila for an Adreganus. An Adreganus is a person who's got the organs also of a male and of a female. It's a Sophic Zachar or Sophic Nekeva, and therefore you do bris mila, but not on Shabbos. Rabbi Yehuda Matir Bandreganus, Rabbi Yehuda says it's considered a Zachar, a male, and therefore you're allowed to do the bris mila on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, Omer of Shizbi, Omer of Chizda. Loy lekol, Omer of Yehuda, Andreganus Zachar hu. It seems from our Mishnah, regarding the alochus of bris mila, that Andreganus has the status of a male. And therefore, you can even do bris milah on Shabbos. But says the Gemara that Rav Yehuda didn't hold this across the board. We've mentioned before, there's a concept called erchin. Every person has a value where the Torah says, depending on whether you're a boy or a girl, depending on your age, this is how much this is what you're worth, so to speak. If somebody says, I'm committing myself to give your value to the Beis Amikdosh, how much does he have to give? That's dependent on the halachas of Erechin. What happens if somebody says, I'm committed to give the value of this Andreganus to the Beis Amikdosh? Then, according to Rav Yehuda, if Rav Yehuda would say what he says across the board, he's called a male, and therefore he's going to have to pay whatever the male in that age bracket has to give. But no. He says, if Rav Yehuda would hold it, there would be Erechin for this Andreganus. But we know that there's no Erech for an Andreganus. An Andreganus is not included in the parish of Erechin, of the value of being able to be, to be estimated his value. doesn't need an estimation. It's dependent on his age. But whatever he's worth, that's what the person has to give to the Beis Hamikdash. We know that Andreganus doesn't, is not in that bracket. How do you know? Maybe, an, maybe Andreganus is considered a Zachar, maybe a Nekeva. But who told you that it's not in the parish of Erechin? The Tanya, we learned in Abraisa. The Pasuk says, The Erech of a male, If he's in the bracket, in the, in the age bracket between 20 and 60, and he's a male, then what we value him is 50 shekel. And the Pasuk says, the next Pasuk, V'im nekevahi, if we're talking about a female, V'hoyerkecho shloishim shekel, then the value is, she's valued at 30 shekel, not 50 shekel. So there's the word hazochor, it could just said, V'hoyerkecho zochor. What's hazochor? The extra hey. And in the next Pasuk, it should just say, V'nekevahi. If it's a nekeva, why do you need V'im, the extra word, and if it is, just talk about a nekeva. So the Gemara is going to come stress both those, the Brysa. Hazachor v'loi tumtum v'adreganus. Hazachor means the Zachor, only an absolute Zachor, not a tumtum who neither his male nor his female organs are exposed, so we don't know what he is, nor an Andreganus who exposes both of the organs. Yoche lo yehei be'erech ish, maybe only from Zohar, he's not got the erech of a male. Avol yehei be'erech isha. Maybe he's downgraded, not downgraded, maybe he's rated at the rates of a female, not of a man. Talmud loyma, that's why it says, ha zohar ve'im nekevahi. The extra word ve'im tells us that zohar vadai nekeva vadai. From the hay of ha zohar and from the ve'im, we learn it's only a vadai zohar and a vadai nekeva is is in the parish of Eirechin, v'loi tumtum vadreganus. And not tumtum vadreganus, that's what it says in the Brysa. V'stam sifra, Rabbi Yehuda, this Brysa is in the sifra, and we know that all sifras, where names are not mentioned, is Rabbi Yehuda. So you see that relative to the parish of Eirechin, Rabbi Yehuda assumes that Andreganus is not called a definite zachor. Om Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchok. We found another alocha where Rabbi Yehuda holds that an Andreganus is not considered a Zohar. 
Lekadesh, Chutz Michera Shaita Vekotten. Anybody is allowed to be Mekadesh. Mekadesh means to prepare the ashes and the water that's going to be used, the ashes of the Parah Duma that will be sprinkled on people that have become Tomei from coming into contact with a dead person and sprinkling on them, according to the halachas of Thomas Meis, they become Tohir. Who's allowed to prepare this water and the ashes? Hakel Ksherim Lekadesh, Chutz Michera Shaita Vekotten. Somebody who's a cheresh, you cannot hear. If he's a shaita or if he's a minor, they cannot prepare the, the waters of the paraduma. Rabbi Yehuda, machshir b'kotten. Rabbi Yehuda says that a cotton, a minor, is allowed to prepare it. Upoisel b'isha, but a woman is not allowed to prepare it. V'andreganus. An andreganus is also not allowed to do it because he's not considered a zachar. Shema mino, we see from here that Rabbi Yehuda considers a a Andragonus, at least as far as the alochus of, of the Poradum are concerned, he considers her in, uh, considers an Andragonus as being an Isha, and that therefore cannot prepare the Poradum. Says the Gemara, Umayish no Mila. If so, if in the alochus of preparing the water of the Poradum, Rabbi Huda does not consider an Andragonus as a male. In the alochus of, of Erechin, Rabbi Huda does not consider an Andragonus a male or a female, considers it a Sophic. Then, then why in Mila does the Rabbi Huda say in the Mishnah that you're allowed to do Mila even on Shabbos? If it's not a Zohar, or if it's even just a Sophic Zohar, you don't do Mila. Says the Gemara, I have a special Pasuk, Mishum Dechsiv, it says in the parish of Mila, Himay Lochem Kol Zohar. Anyone that any part Zohar is included in the mitzvah of Mila. And Dragonus, the fact that he's also a Zohar, he also has the male organs, therefore he's, he's in the bracket of Bris Mila, Yehuda, and you're allowed to even do the Bris Mila on Shabbos. And in the next year, we're going to continue from here.